Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. So if you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. So as I do my videos, some people have some thoughts or ideas or comments about things that I may have mentioned in a prior video. And my original video titled was Brushy Bill, Really Billy the Kid, which was part two of a three-part series I produced about Billy Kid. It stirred up a lot more ideas and thoughts. And I realized that there were some more avenues and areas that definitely could be covered and probably should be discussed on this topic. So if you have not watched the three-part series, you really should start with part one that describes the Billy the Kid story according to the history books. And then my part two covers the possibility that William Henry Brushy Bill Roberts, also known as Ollie Brushy Bill Roberts, may have been a surviving Billy the Kid. And part three covers the discrepancies of Sheriff Pat Garrett's story surrounding the supposed killing of Billy the Kid. So I will link all three parts in the video description so you can go through them first and then you'll have a fuller understanding of some of the additional things we're going to cover in this video and this will be additional to the part two there's just a lot more topics to cover on this matter so preferably watch those three videos and then watch this video this video will kind of serve as a part 2.2 or continuation of the part two brushy bill video So some of the additional things that have come up support the idea that Brushy Bill may have been Billy the Kid and some of the other things that have been brought up do not support that conclusion. So we'll go over both sides and you can make your own conclusions. So one of the biggest things that people get hung up on is Oliver Brushy Bill Roberts' date of birth or like we said William Henry Brushy Bill Roberts depending on which name you go by he went by both so people get stuck on his date of birth being about 20 years later than Billy the Kid so if this is an identity theft type of situation which it is said to be then if Brushy Bill really was Billy the Kid then Billy would have assumed Brushy Bill Roberts identity much later in life as is believed to have occurred if Brushy Bill was Billy the Kid. Many people believe if Billy survived in 1881 that he had many identities before finally assuming the Oliver or William Henry Brushy Bill Roberts identity in the later part of his life. So if Billy could have been, say, in his 60s or 70s, assuming the identity of a younger but still middle-aged man, this could have been the case. You didn't need a bunch of documents back in those days to show who you were like you need today. The other thing that people forget is that even today, if someone steals your identity, they don't care when and where you were born they just pretend to be you and no one is any wiser and that was probably the case back then too since when does an identity thief care how old their victim is even these days they don't so they don't they don't look for a victim that's the same age as them they just make sure that they don't live in the same area where someone would actually know the victim and Brushy Bill Roberts was from an area quite a ways from Heiko, Texas, making the chances of discovery very slim back in those days, and particularly if you kept a low profile. So I see the argument of, of Ollie Roberts or William Henry Roberts being about 20 years younger so he couldn't be billing Billy the Kid, I see that as not really a valid point, as identity thieves don't really care how old someone is, they just pretend to be them regardless. So now it's still possible that Brushy Bill Roberts was not Billy the Kid, but the age discrepancy does not actually prove that. 
So according to Brushy Bill Roberts, he was born a Roberts himself as William Henry Roberts. And Oliver or Ollie Roberts was a younger cousin of his that had already passed on by the point that he took his identity. So apparently that made him even more relaxed when taking Oliver's identity. Brushy knew that Oliver was already dead. So Brushy went by Ollie and not Oliver, but when he was, you know, being referred to most of the time as Brushy or Bill. So most people probably never would have connected two and two, even if they had known Oliver Roberts. So it seems some more chances to distance himself, himself from the identity that he stole was probably going by Bill rather than, you know, Oliver or completely assuming that identity. But if he needed to state his real name, he used Oliver Roberts. So also with Oliver being a family member, younger cousin, Brushy may have had, had access to get birth certificates or other documents as he would know the family details and history. So it's easier to steal your cousin's identity when you know he is no longer here and you know the family history and you live halfway across Texas. So another thing that keeps being brought up is DNA testing to prove if Billy died in 1881 or not. So we've already discussed that Billy's grave marker in New Mexico is possibly not in the right location due to a flood that went through that cemetery after he was buried. And this flood moved many of the grave markers. So after the flood, the grave markers had to be placed back in their approximate locations. So no one really knows if Billy's grave marker is actually in the correct location or if it could in fact be a different body under underneath the gravestone and of course people suggest that Billy's mother Catherine needed to be exhumed too to have her DNA test done on her but there are problems with this too as I believe we chatted about that in the last video the cemetery where Catherine is buried had been sold and the graves were supposed to be moved the graves and the bodies were supposed to be moved to the new cemetery but no one really knows if they really were moved. I believe the grave markers may have been moved, but no one knows if all the bodies were moved or if they were even moved into the proper spots. So it could be that there, there may be no body underneath Catherine's grave at all, or it could be the wrong body, or it could be numerous things. So it's possible that the grave markers were moved and no bodies or you know are underneath those grave markers and and we wouldn't really know and i'm not sure how they would be able to try to exhume catherine's body but that that wouldn't really prove anything so you wouldn't know if you even had the right body and the same thing goes with where the body of the supposed billy the kid was buried in 1881 we really don't know if there is a body under there if it's actually the one that was buried as billy or if the grave marker would be in the complete wrong place after the flood so another thought that people had which actually seems like a pretty good idea when it comes to dna would be to dna test joseph antrim who is thought to be billy's brother or half brother so Joseph died around 1930 in Denver. So if we were able to test his DNA and compare it to Brushy Bill's, then we could see if there may be some shared DNA. So a half-brother should test around 1,800 centimorgans of shared DNA, and a full-brother should be in the neighborhood of 2,700 centimorgans. So, of course, being able to exhume both bodies could be a major hurdle, though. And that may be some of the last proof that, that we may be able to determine to know the real history for Billy the Kid, whether he survived or not. But this isn't quite so simple, though. According to Brushy Bill Roberts' account, Joseph Antrim was not actually his brother or half-brother. 
they were just raised together as brothers. So Brushy did say that his parents were James and Adeline Roberts and that he was born in Buffalo Gap, Texas on December 31st, 1859. So he said in 1862, while his father was fighting in the Civil War, his mother had died. So his mother dies, his father's off at war. He said then he landed in the care of Catherine McCarty, who he said was his maternal half-aunt. So now I know we already talked about shared DNA, which is measured in centimorgans, which is a DNA measuring unit that's used to track ancestry and partial DNA matches. So if Joseph was not Billy's brother or half-brother, then by Brushy's account, this would make Joseph Billy's half-first cousin, according to Brushy's story. There's a big difference between shared DNA in this situation as a half-first cousin would likely share around only 450 centimorgans of DNA with each other. And there's charts that, that give these probabilities and, and details, and it's used in the ancestry community a lot, and I've messed with that a, a lot. So this is still within the realm of being able to track through DNA testing. And I've tested a lot of my cousins and, and uh, second cousins and stuff will, will test into this range. You can track further than that. So if DNA tests were ever able to be done on Joseph and Brushy Bill, we would likely find out the exact relationship between Brushy Bill and Joseph Antrim. And if such a test proved that they were half first cousins, then we would know that Brushy's story was likely entirely true and that he was likely the son of James and Mary Roberts and Catherine McCarty was then his half aunt and he was truly Billy the Kid. So it was also stated that Sheriff Pat Garrett was a con man and a screw up on his last chance. And if he had admitted to killing an innocent man, it would have not been good for his career at this point, And it could have possibly landed him in jail. So if this was what happened, then he may have done everything in his power to cover it up. Also, why wasn't Billy paraded around the streets after his supposed death? Supposedly, he was wanted man number one or wanted criminal number one in all of New Mexico. So, barely anyone claimed to have seen the body after the death, and Billy was buried very quickly the next morning. There were no photographs taken of him, and some people say it's because there was no photographer available in town. But in other cases, photographers had been sent for with other outlaws, so pictures could be taken post-mortem. So, why was that not done in this case, even if there wasn't a photographer in town? It seems like one should have been sent for, and pictures could have been taken, and it would have proved Pat Garrett's case even more, but this didn't happen. So was there something to hide? If you had really killed the biggest outlaw in the West, wouldn't you want your picture taken with him like was done with the Dalton gang and various other outlaws when they were killed? Wouldn't Pat Garrett want the publicity and the photos to prove it and to help him redeem himself and help him claim the reward? So another thing that sows some seeds of doubt in my mind when it comes to Pat Garrett and Billy's brother Joseph is that Joseph Antrim swore that he would kill Pat Garrett for killing his brother. So it happens that the two of them did cross paths in a saloon in Colorado and there's, there are witnesses to this and a uh, a little while after they crossed paths, I believe they ended up going into another room. And what happened is not what you would expect. Most people would have expected that harsh words would have been exchanged and Joseph may have pulled his weapon on Pat Garrett, or it would have been a very tense situation. But instead what happened was they went into another room to talk and they were seen leaving and shaking hands and parting ways amicably. So does that sound like something that would happen if Billy was really dead? I would imagine this kind of a counter could have only occurred if Joseph already knew by this point that Billy was not dead. And possibly they're shaking hands and they're fine with each other because maybe it had been arranged for Billy to escape. But anyhow, 
Another thing that was brought up is the height difference between Brushy and a young Billy the Kid. So young Billy the Kid was said to be 5 feet 7 inches tall at the age of 21. And Brushy was said to be 5 foot 8 inches tall at the supposed age of 90 when he died. So people think that Brushy would have shrunk an inch or so later in life. Meaning that he had most likely been closer to 5 foot 9 inches tall. I know this is only a 2 inch discrepancy but it seems very important to some people. Another point that some people bring up is that possibly Brushy was not Billy the Kid, but that he could have actually been Billy Barlow, who may have survived that fateful night since he had been close friends with Billy the Kid. He would have known a heck of a lot about Billy and Billy the Kid's past. Also, people believe that Billy Barlow was not actually his real name anyways. It was an alias. So some think this could explain when, you know, why when Brushy was trying to clear his name at the end of his life, he could not identify certain people that came to the hearing that apparently he should have known. So if Brushy really was Billy Barlow, he may not have known some of Billy the Kid's acquaintances, but he would have definitely not known all of them but known some of them in which case he might not have been able to identify certain people that had showed up also at that hearing for the pardon brushy did not remember some of the details that people expected he probably shouldn't have forgotten on the flip side of that Memory and details can fade with time, especially with nearly 70 years of time. As a matter of fact, the other day I was trying to tell a college story to a friend that, and I used to remember this college story very well from 20 years ago, and I could mainly remember some of the basics, but I couldn't for the life of me remember exactly who was there beyond only a couple of the key people. So I guess I can look at that and say my memory is faded pretty good in only 20 to 25 years since that story had taken place. Plus, not being able to recognize someone 60 to 70 years later, though, does seem totally understandable. People's faces change a lot, so it can be totally understandable. There's people that run into people they haven't seen for 20 years and maybe think they look maybe a little bit familiar. Maybe they don't recognize them at all and, and then discover that it's someone that they knew when they were younger. Another thing people have mentioned is that Brushy Bill did not have buck teeth like Billy the Kid did. So the funny thing about this though is that when Brushy died and relatives went through his things they found a jar in his possession with two large front teeth in it. So there is a sworn affidavit by DeWitt Travis attesting that the dental work, the removal of the infamous buck teeth, was done by Dr. Cruz in 1931 in Glidewater, Texas. Of course, getting rid of the well-known buck teeth would have been something Billy would likely want to do if he escaped death, but of course dentistry was not that advanced or not advanced enough in the 1880s, so it could have been something that an escaped Billy had to live with for some time until he felt technology and everything was advanced enough that he could get rid of identifiable buck teeth. Another note, when it came to the visit to New Mexico to try to dismiss all the charges against Billy the Kid or get a pardon issued, Brushy Bill was, of course, taking a big chance. Now, remember that Billy was a wanted outlaw who still had murder charges pending against him, and they had not been ever dismissed. So Brushy was taking a big chance by claiming to be Billy the Kid. He could have been thrown in jail. So would you claim to be an outlaw that had murder charges against him that still stood for, would you do that for a little bit of notoriety at the end of your life knowing the kind of media circus and frenzy that would follow you every day from that point forward? I don't think most people would think that it was worth the risk. And that might have also been why for so long he stayed under the radar and he was kind of flushed out. He might have never planned to, you know, come into the light with, with this situation. Another point that was brought up was that 
Brushy did not admit to being Billy the Kid during the first visit with Morrison when Brushy's wife was present. So he had to tell Morrison to come back the next day when his wife would be gone. So why was that? Now I hadn't thought about this too much until someone brought up this good point. Brushy didn't want his wife to hear that he was Billy the Kid because then she would likely question if their marriage was even legal since this would mean that she married him under a false name. And he didn't want that at this point in his life. So it seems that he may have been unintentionally flushed out and didn't really intend to ever tell anyone that he was Billy the Kid except for maybe Morrison because of Morrison's connection to the case. Then everything spiraled out of control and the world found out his secret and he was forced to deal with it. So as a matter of fact, if his old outlaw friend from Florida hadn't given up his location, then it seems that Brushy likely would have never been flushed out or even sought any sort of attention at all. So this is also a big factor for a lot of people that believe that Brushy Bill was Billy the Kid. They see this as as a good case of him not being someone just looking for a lot of notoriety, someone that was just content to lay low and really never tell his secret until it was flushed out. And there had been other Billy the Kid claimants that had done it for the attention and stuff like that, and, and Brushy was never like that. Another topic that's been brought up a quite a bit is that Billy was fluent in Spanish, and some say that Brushy knew some Spanish, but was apparently not fluent in Spanish. So some people really believe that this is proof that Brushy was not Billy, although Morrison did state that he heard Brushy having a full conversation in Spanish with one of the neighbors they visited. So we may not really know how much Spanish Brushy really knew, but I'll give you an example of what can happen So a family member of mine studied Spanish for many years and was very fluent in Spanish. She even lived in Mexico studying abroad as part of her college program. So she was living in Mexico, taking college classes, taught in Spanish, needed to be able to understand, speak, read, and write Spanish. She wrote academic papers in Spanish for her college classes and spoke the language very well. Now that she's been back in Arizona for well over 20 years now and only using or hearing some Spanish here and there as it is still all around us here in Arizona a fair amount. But she is no longer fully fluent in Spanish and can can no longer easily hold a conversation in Spanish. So if you don't use it, you lose it. It really can be true. So consider Brushy Bill and also what it was like at the time. Billy was fluent in Spanish as it was needed in New Mexico in the 1860s and 70s before very many white men came there and made eventually made that area more predominantly English over time. The same probably happened in Texas and if Brushy was Billy he may not have needed to use Spanish as much anymore as he could have lost you know, a bit of his fluency at that point then. There are also people that are confused and claim that Brushy Bill claimed to be part of the Jesse James gang. Now, this comes about because a newspaper reporter that was present in the later year's birthday party um, or birthday function for J. Frank Dalton had mistaken Brushy Bill, who was in attendance, they had mistaken him with Jesse James gang member claimant Colonel James R. Davis. This mix up spread like wildfire and was never corrected. So Brushy never claimed to be a member of the, the James gang. Colonel James R. Davis was claiming to have been a member of the James gang and was in attendance at this same party. Brushy just happened to be there as he and J. Frank Dalton had an acquaintance in common and that acquaintance had invited Brushy to the event. So these are just a few of the additional points and topics we didn't cover extremely well in the first Brushy Bill video. So like I said at the beginning of the video, 
Watch My Billy the Kid, parts one, two, and three for the overall stories, and then this will serve as a second part of the Brushy Bill video, and everything will make a lot more sense there. And then you can let us know if you have any other ideas or thoughts in the comments. Thanks.